In this video, I'm going to go over a quick example of how we can describe various types of sampling techniques. So here we're told that Bradentown Hospital wants to sample 1,000 of the town's 4,000 residents about their health so that they can study the relationship between smoking and cholesterol. What we're going to do is we're going to be given four different sampling techniques. We just want to describe a situation. How could they go about conducting that sample given each of these individual techniques. So the first one is a convenience sampling technique. And when we talk about convenience, it's exactly that. So if we are thinking about a town that has 4,000 residents, we might just go knock on door to door, every single door, until we get 1,000. So we also could sit outside of the hospital and wait for people to come outside. So let's just list some examples. So one is wait outside a hospital, and sample 1,000 people. Or we could just say, and ask 1,000 people. Now you could see where convenience is not necessarily going to give us a good sample. If we're waiting outside a hospital, that could potentially result into some bias into this particular sampling because the people in the hospital may be unhealthy coming out, or maybe their patients, uh, who knows. But when we are talking about convenience, it's just whatever's easiest. You could also just post something on Facebook. So you could post a, a survey on Facebook. In this particular case, post a survey on Facebook. This would be called a voluntary response, where people who are the only people that we are sampling are the ones who are voluntarily responding. And we've, we, as we've seen before, that's not necessarily a good technique. If we talk about systematic sampling, systematic, if we had the entire town, maybe we would knock on every fifth door. So we would knock, oops, if I can spell knock, there's a C, let me just erase that. We would knock on every fifth door. And then in order to do that, we would keep knocking on every fifth door and however many people are in there, we would sample them. So it's, it's a systematic because we have a system. We are going every fifth door. The key word with the systematic is look for that every. So we have a pattern. Every fifth door, every fifth house, we're going to knock and ask about their cholesterol and smoking habits. The final two types of sampling that we're going to look at are cluster and stratified. These present the biggest challenges for students. The reason why is they are relatively similar. So if we are talking about cluster, cluster, let's say we have the entire town map. Here we have the entire town map. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this town into groups of 500. So if we had, let me see if I can do this. Right there, we broke the town into four groups. So here, if this is the town map and we have four groups, each group here is worth a thousand. So we're going to split these all in half. So now what we have is we split the entire group, the entire town into clusters of five thousand. Okay, so we have, or I'm not five thousand, but five hundred. We have split the entire town into clusters of equal, equal sizes here of 500. Notice if you were to add all these up, these two 500s make 1,000, this makes 1,000, this makes 1,000, this makes 1,000. So we have broken the town into clusters. And what we're going to do now is randomly select two. So I'm just going to randomly select two, and my randomization is not technically random because I just chose two. I didn't flip a coin or anything. And what we did is we broke the town, and now we have two clusters of 500 where we're going to sample every single person in this grouping of 500. And we're going to sample every single person in this grouping of 500. This is called cluster. And the key here is knowing that we are sampling every single person within that cluster. And notice if we did that, we would have 1,000. Stratified is slightly different. Stratified, and let me see if I can draw another town map here. I'll use a different color. We are breaking the town 
into groups or stratus. So we could break the town into men and women. And maybe we'll do that. Let's see if we, if we could split the town into 2,000 men. Let's say the town is exactly split, split at 2,000 men and 2,000 women. It doesn't have to be that. It could be streets. You want to break the town into streets. Or potentially you want to break the town and look at race. Um, here we're looking at gender. You could look at social economic class. But you have to make sure that when you're taking the sample, it is proportional. So here we have taken the town, and we have decided to break it into an exact, considering that there's 2,000 men and 2,000 women, what we want to do is now take, how can we take 1,000, a sample of 1,000? Well, what I'm going to do is sample 500 men and sample 500 women. And that would put my total of 500 men and 500 women, a total of 1,000 individuals. Now we want to make sure that our sample, 500 to 500, notice that's 50-50, we have half men, half women, is also in the same ratio as men to women as the entire town. Another thing that you could do is to, if we were to look back up here at this cluster example, here we have broken into groups of 500, Stratified, if we were to use this particular map, we would not randomly choose an entire cluster and select all of them, but we would take a little. We would sample just a few people from each one of these particular stratas. So that's how cluster is different than stratified. Strata, or excuse me, stratified looks at these individual pieces and takes a little from every one, where cluster will sample every one from these pieces that are broken up.